uh, and talk to our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield. Uh, sorry, Mark, it's been a confusing uh, uh, few minutes here. Thank you for holding on with us. Uh, of course, MTC is there in the 206. He's the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santo Show. And he is, of course, a great musician, Democracy Watch News Executive Director, and, of course, a, a great activist for the progressive community. Mr. MTC, do I hear a guitar chord? Am I on video now? Ah, you are. <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> Jimmy, eat your heart out. That was uh, loud. Have you had that for a long time? Year, I don't know if there. Wow. How you doing, Jeff? You're looking good. Uh, I'm hanging in there, man. You know, it's insane, but I'm hanging in there. <laughs> hey, listen, we're going to... Oh, wow. Um, we, we, we've told our, our friends think it's uh, there. in the production center. We just, uh, we're going to hold you over. Republican? Oh, go ahead. Until 5.50 today, uh, or 2.50 oh. your time. Uh, if that's okay, sweet, you know, um, absolutely, so we're going to do that just to let uh, our our production studio there in in Boca talk to you. Um, you were saying there are no Republicans on this show, so you don't have to worry about that, Mark. No, uh, in Seattle, uh, we've been watching the Washington State primaries, which took place last week, and yes. unfortunately, uh, the Republican member of Congress from Washington State, uh, Jamie Herrera Butler, Butler. Mm -hmm. uh, she lost her primary to Joe King, who's one of those right wing loonies who was oh, yeah. supported by Donald Trump. So even in Washington state, one of the most progressive states in the country, the, the Trumpers are out there. The Trumpsters are out there trying to win uh, local and state elections. And luckily, our uh, state legislature looks like it's going to continue to be majority Democrats in the House. And in the um, Senate, there was a lot of fear mongering going on for a while, even among Democrats, about how they were looking bad for this election. But the results are actually surprising in that uh, most of the incumbents, especially in the Democratic Party, have won handily. But in this one race, which is in the third congressional district, uh, which represents, you know, a much more rural part of Washington state, you have now Joe King, who's running uh instead of the incumbent republican for congress and that's a little bit frightening he he's still denying that uh biden won the election so yeah these that, are the that people crowd is still that around. are running for office should i check my immigration status in, into canada yeah, you, jeff you i mean and I would Columbia is looking thing right too. Now. i'm gonna put you on i'm gonna we're gonna put you on uh, put you're not gonna put you anywhere stay right there we're gonna go to a commercial break we're gonna come back with mtc Live from Seattle, guitar with the shades. You know, you know, I mean, every radio show doesn't have, or TV show now, an MTC with it. We're wrapping into the weekend, folks. It's the Jeff Santo Show. MTC back in three. The show that is uh, in front of you and in front of us. The weekend is nearby. Our uh, great friend. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Taylor Canfield is with us. Uh, this is for the first time on video uh, in a long, long time. We've done a lot of things with uh, Mark and Free Speech TV and uh, over the years, but this is the first time on, on this uh, daily show that, uh, that we are doing uh, all of this and very excited uh, to, be, uh, to be focused with our good friend MTC. Um, we'll go to about 55 past and we'll do a short... Uh, uh, commentary on the bottom of this after this very explosive week in the world of politics that's uh, seemingly every day um, there is something new out of mar a uh, including the, the news today of, of uh, boxes of uh, information and uh, the Republicans, of course, eating this up, saying it's all the Democrats' fault, blaming Ron Klain, all that nonsense. Well, they're, uh, there's, they, they should look in the mirror because they're the ones that started this. January 6th is a perfect example of that. Librarians versus uh, and, Trump. I love that line. Librarians versus Trump. Yeah, they're the heroes, go. the Librarian National Archives. Thank I love you guys. The librarians. Yes. Yeah. I'm all in, all in favor of the librarians. And um, in fact, I got an email uh, making sure they want to keep open one of the. Uh, uh, one of the libraries here in town. All, all the best and, and go libraries go. It's a, it's a cornerstone of we have public a local library. libraries is so important. We have a local, and thank you, Ben Franklin. We have a local library here, uh, a librarian who is so popular that they actually have a hero action figure 
uh, created <laughs> about her. And it's like Nancy the librarian, because she is so super cool. And you can hear her on local radio and TV talking about, you know, the latest books that have been published and stuff like that. So she's cool. And she's kind of like Maria Tomlinson. It would be great to get her on your show sometime just to talk because she loves books. So anything you, you want to mention about publishing or archiving, she's yeah, there. No. You know, she's good. Pass along a phone yeah. number. You know how to reach me, my man. Uh, that would be yep. great. I would love that. And 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 and, and just uh, as a uh, sign, Melissa like Tomlinson teachers. is back with us on Tuesday. Go right ahead. Badass teachers. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I love that. She is too. badass. Yes, yeah, great. Best name in politics. Well, Mark, that would be uh, before we get into rock rock. She should start a rock that's band right. and call it that. That's yeah. a great name. Oh, that's a great idea. You know, you know we should. Great we should uh, teachers. Badass teachers, man. Everyone would go see them just because of the name. They'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, exactly." That is that's a great idea. I mean, you know, I mean, just just think of it. I mean, you think of all the bad names for for rock and roll bands that are out there. Um, there are a lot. Know, I mean, some would, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe some know. bands became famous with their names they have because they're just so stupid. But oh well, I'm not going to mention them. But. Uh, yeah, there have been I mean, a lot of really Durand, bad. Durand, really I mean, what's that? That's what I learned. No matter how bad the name yeah. of the band is, if you like your music, they will still go listen to you. There is the one from San Francisco that I used to like when I hung out down there, named Bong Water. You know, oh my, it's not a great Bong name, Water. but some people like. No, it. not really. That did that wouldn't do anything for me. No, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, look, people have taken advantage of a famous name, put the word "dead" in front of it, "Dead Kennedys," right? So, I mean, you know, there's there's all of that. But there's um, there's a number of different ways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, Oingo Boingo. You know, he's great. I mean, he said, know. He's the one who said, don't complain about the media, be the media. So I really appreciate that. I got to meet him one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a great Yeah. But he's the one no, who I said, did, yeah, don't were... stop complaining about the media and do it. Make media yourself. And I agree. You're doing it. Well, the problem is it's very, very hard. Yeah, but I mean, you know, um, <laughs> not easy. Occasionally, I do. <laughs> you know. I have this thing called the MTC, the MTC report. report. Wow, you even you even got the cue cards, man. You come prepared. This is like video you know, this is look at that. Woodblock printing, Jeff. They had they ran over this <laughs> with a steam roller in order to make it work Did because they? we just made woodblock prints. I'm I'm frozen I, too. I, uh, and, this is um, too much. Okay, I shouldn't move so fast. But that was part of the block party where they teach you how to do wood block printing. So that's like one of a kind, that card. It, it came from having to literally paint wood, carved out wooden letters and place them on, on this tray and then have something run over it really heavy. So it's part of Seattle is we like wood block printing here. <laughs> it's like old school, <laughs> super old school before printers. Yeah, bring back the blacksmiths, man. Why not? There's another good name for a band. The blacksmiths. Is, is there a name? Yeah. Was there a band called the Blacksmiths? Maybe maybe it's already been done. There should be. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. There's the Black Tones here in Seattle, but not the Blacksmiths yet, who are yeah. on a national tour, by the way. So shout out to Eva and Cedric Walker. They're really good, cool members of the community who've done so much, played so many um, benefits for homeless shelters and other great things. She has her own show on KEXP, by the way. Uh, the very cool, amazing radio station in Seattle. So if anybody wants to know what's cutting edge music, just go to kexp.org. I'm not getting paid for saying that. I don't work for them, but they are the major Seattle nonprofit uh, music station that just pushes Seattle bands and has helped break a lot of really famous bands, including ones we haven't talked about before, like the Fleet Foxes and Harvey Danger. And they're, you know, besides Death Cab yeah, for Cutie, I've heard of Harvey a, Danger. That have made big names for themselves and done world tours. And the first thing you have to do in Seattle is get your music on KEXP, which actually was started by Paul Allen, by the way, one of the Microsoft wow. billionaires. Now the that's, things he did. that's shocking because, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, was he Paul Allen of Microsoft fame at that time when he started it or was yeah. he Paul Allen, you know, also uh, started the music trying to put two, rub two nickels together. Music project. He collected Jimi Hendrix memorabilia. He was in a rock okay. band himself. So there was a part of him, the, the Seahawks owner, that's when I met him is when he was a Seahawks owner at the uh, world, uh, at the Super Bowl um, yeah. celebration, where like 70,000 people came out in the streets in Seattle. And he was actually kind of stuck in traffic, you know, not great security guys, you know, keeping one of the world's richest people <laughs> sitting in this little car. 
But you know, he, they rolled down like the window. Three or so something was he? It was a small white car. I don't remember the the kind of car. He was trying to be non-discreet or indiscreet, yeah, yeah. which is what people do in Seattle. Rich people here drive Toyotas and stuff, and and you know Priuses, of course, and a few Teslas. But I've seen a few Mercedes lately. Um, but watch out for those people. You don't want to. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, a lot of those are the corporate people who have moved yeah, here yeah. from other places. Well, you got you got the Amazons. Yeah. You got this. You got the. Uh, uh, Starbucks. Hey, you know, I was talking earlier with with John Shelton. Who we're going to have on a lot. Uh, a good friend of Harvey K. and uh, the vice president of AFT Wisconsin. And you know, he was um, he was talking a lot about you know the the Starbucks workers and what uh, Schiltz is uh, looking to do, um, and you know, and basically trying to wipe out these uh, these major gains. It's now 211 stores, Mark, that have um, unionized across the country. I'm wondering, you know, because it's all there in, in, in Seattle, you know, what, what is the, the pushback, the feedback by local people? I mean, do any of the, the political figures outside of Salant, the great progressive city councilor, um, democratic socialist, I mean, is there anybody, you know, saying, hey, you know, we have to take a look at this. You know, they may give us money, Starbucks, to all of our campaigns, but, you know, they're, they're treating people like dirt. And, you know, why, why do we in a progressive city, you know, allow this? Is there any, any talk like that at all or too much donor money? We can't say anything. I don't know. Show us the one. As usual, the Democratic Socialist City Council member has been out front on uh, these labor issues. She was there supporting the carpenter strike. Uh, she's been there uh, right up front passing resolutions to the City Council supporting the Starbucks workers' uh, right to uh, protest and unionize. And she also... Uh, lately, you know, there's a actually Sunday, I believe, Jeff, there is a, a rally, a solidarity rally in Seattle for some child care workers who just got uh, uh, fired in Seattle because they began to unionize and organize. So uh, it's, you, you know, labor is a big issue here. I know that the Teamsters 117, they follow me on on Twitter and stuff like that. There's the SEIU folks like that have been really strong. Uh, the ILWU in pushing, you know, for labor issues in this area, the King County Labor Council, the Martin Luther King Jr. County Labor Council uh, represents, you know, over 100,000 people. So they're, they have a lot of might. And so I think um, Shama Sawan is right in taking the lead on this. I think a lot of the other uh, more middle of the road or neoliberal city council members don't feel comfortable taking a stand on issues like this. In fact, two of them voted or, or abstained and refused to vote on her resolution supporting the Starbucks workers, they decided not to vote for that, saying that they didn't think it was the city council's job to um, uh, speak out on private issues, you know, and Starbucks being a private corporation. Uh, they didn't think it was their job, but come on, you know, a city council member, you represent everyone and you represent Starbucks workers too. And so you have to stand up for them that, you know, it's not about uh, private versus public. I mean, whether it was a public employee union or a private, you know, corporation, you need to stand for labor rights. So that's all I have to say about that. But um, yeah, Shama Swan has been out in front on the Starbucks and the um, Amazon uh, workers' right to organize. And, you know, there has been some pushback. There was a recall election that uh, tried to uh, replace Shama Swan on her city council, um, funded by a lot of very wealthy business interests. But she actually was able to raise more money than them, I think, by the end of it. And with these national call outs, because of her international reputation and she won her recall election. So uh, that was kind of a waste of money um, on the part of the business interest guys. I would say like not a good uh, call in terms of, you know, monetization and business sense to waste money trying to get rid of someone who's so popular. Yeah. Hopefully they no learn out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, my, my hope here is that, uh, uh, you know, that is, um, that Sawan will get more allies, you know, um, in the city council. And uh, it's, it's, it needs to be more than just her. Um, talking with MTC here on the Jeff Santo Show. Uh, look, you were, you, were, uh, you were texting uh, over the last 24 hours about uh, Chris Connell. And, um, you know, I, I'm fascinated by, by all of that. Um, give us the latest on that, uh, Mark. Well, you know, I am a major p part of the Seattle music scene. I, I'm here in my studio, as you can see, and spent a lot of my time here recording mm -hmm. and writing music, producing music. So 
I think about uh, the, the people in this city who have influenced me. Of course, this is David Bowie back here behind me behind me but um i you know he's, I also he's the guy that i really wanted to see and you know i i had a chance to potentially because you know my my friends in new york at the time running uh, uh the great place in soho there um you know uh we're doing one of his last albums but that's if one guy that you know on on a bucket list to see before he he passed uh, tragically a couple of years ago or a few years ago was bowie uh so you know huge fan you know, talk about, yeah. you know, just crossing well, so many different uh, genres. Right. See, he has influenced me because of my songwriting. I often think about him when I write songs. And then when I play electric guitar, like on my beautiful flying V here, I think about Jimi yes. Hendrix. Now, Hendrix yeah. actually is from Seattle. Um, but Bowie did spend some time in Seattle. There are stories about him just kind of wandering around the streets of Seattle and nobody really knew what he was doing here, but he was probably just trying to get some ideas. But he's uh, always been an, uh, a great songwriter in my estimation. Started as kind of a folk singer and you know went through a pop phase and stuff like that. But by the time he found his voice, I think he was uh, a very eclectic musician who worked with everyone from Brian Eno to Iggy Pop, right? So he was all over the place. And I, and I am that way myself. I mean, I have kind of a rock blues, rootsy, grungy mm -hmm. kind of sound. But I also write rock ballads and slower folky kind of rock songs and stuff. And I think Bowie has influenced me and allowed me to think about myself as a songwriter in a larger perspective, you know, and to go and break down those, those genres. But Chris Cornell, I walk by his statue almost every day. It's outside of the um, Museum for Pop Culture in Seattle. And so he's out there. I often high five him, uh, just like I rub Jimmy's head when I walk by it on Broadway. <laughs> Uh, for luck. And um, yeah, and I think about their music when I see them. And it's important to me, you know, there was a big ceremony there when they unveiled it. And Vicky, his wife has, um, was there. And his daughter was there also. And she has her own band in Seattle, which we can talk about more at, at a future time. But I hope to see her perform soon. But uh, Vicky and Chris uh, are uh, in, in memory of Chris and also as you know, his, this started before he passed away. Um, they started the Vicky and Chris Cornell Foundation, and they started hoping uh, to help out homeless kids in Seattle, which they did. They helped fund this place called the Phoenix House, but they also decided to go international and started working with the International Rescue Committee, the IRC, which works with refugee children all over the world. So he ended up traveling, Chris Cornell traveled to different parts of the world, meeting uh, with uh, organizers and activists in, uh, and healthcare workers in refugee camps. And so he and Vicky had this foundation um, and now she's the main spokesperson for it, of course, because he's not with us anymore, but she um, is out there still helping to raise money for um, very worthwhile causes. Uh, Chris apparently was very concerned about children and uh, abused children and at-risk children. So a lot of the foundation is dedicated to that. He also wrote a song um, for a, a film called The Promise, which you can see, I believe, on YouTube and other platforms. Yeah. And it's a it, really beautiful song that he wrote, you know, thinking about, you know, their work in this in this area. And it made a big difference in the film and the message that they're trying to get across to people there about refugees around the world. So I am I have to say, you know, as when it comes to politics and activism, um, that's a very good example of what some Seattle musicians have done. Pearl Jam has done a lot of work um, raising money for homeless shelters. They've also helped out a lot of local bands and worked with at-risk kids themselves in trying to foster the love of music and you know rock and roll and trying to get kids off the street and you know playing music. So they've even just chipped in to help out local bands and Mike McCready um, from Sound. Uh, well, Mike McCready and also Kim Thale from Soundgarden, but Mike McCready from Pearl Jam has also right, right, uh, right. stepped up to support local bands. So well, I don't know, you know if you can see from your vantage point, but we got uh, a little U2 from Joshua Tree uh, right above uh, Bernie Sanders here. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's uh, they've been they've been my music heroes, if you might. You know what he's done, oh, yeah. you know, with uh, with AIDS and Greenpeace and all that uh, over the years, Bono and, and the rest of the band there. And um, I you used know. to listen to October and Boy uh, continually, sure. over and over and over again. Just that was part of my musical education. I was just like so enthralled with those albums and the 
the really empathetic and and passionate vocals that Bono did, and also that crazy uh, edge guitar playing that nobody else oh. kind of did. Yeah, I love Unforgettable Fire when they when Brian Eno produced that. I think that's, I mean, oh my gosh, in the name of oh wow, in the name of love, pride. I mean, you know, that's a poem. I actually read that as a poem. You know, not you know as, as the lyrics. I mean, it's just. It's just something that, you know, um, as a matter of fact, in yeah. a bunch of U2 books, uh, you know, they, Eno is, is telling Bono, he says, look, he's no matter what happens with Unforgettable Fire, you have a hit that you can you just, you know, run with uh, to, um, you know, to, you know, to stardom. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the interesting things that happened at Live Aid, uh, you probably know this, Mark, being uh, in, in the business, but they were going to play uh, in the name of love, which had just come out a year before. This is 1985, July of 85, Live Aid. And, uh, of course, they went on and, and bad. They were playing bad. And, of course, that whole, uh, you know, scene where and there was a woman being trampled and Bono wanted to bring uh, her over. And so they spent like six minutes. The band didn't know what the heck was going on. They just kept, you know, playing the chords. And Bono is is literally jumping off the uh, the stage, two stages, you know, to to help and hug these uh, these women who just were getting trampled and so forth, and you know, shoved against the wall. Um, and but they didn't have enough time to do the third song. You know, it was first, um, you know, uh, uh, Bloody Sunday, and then it was Bad, and then it was supposed to be, you know, their new hit at the time, uh, in the name of Love. But they never got to play it. So. Uh. That's a great yeah. rock and roll story. I yeah. just think about Martin Luther King Jr. Whenever I hear that song, and oh, I know, there was a I really, know. a really amazing uh, pastor from Texas who told me from a congregational church in Seattle, who whose piano I used to play because they had a piano there and they let me come in and play their Baby Grand, and it was such a nice place to rehearse my stuff. And so he gave me a book one day and he said, I think, you know, he says, I'm, you know, I'm going to do some traveling with my wife. We're about a sailboat. We're going to go sailing for a while. So I don't know when I'll be back, but here's a book I want you to have. And it turned out to be, I think it's called the strength to love or the courage to love by um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And it just blew my mind. Like I, I've cherished that book ever since, you know, I felt like through that book, I developed some kind of personal, you know, relationship with Dr. King and I've never forgotten that. And also, you know, such a, a great gift to give a young person, you know, to cherish, you know, and to kind of shape their their being. I think he felt like I, I need I want to influence this guy in a good way somehow. And so this is that's what he gave me. So I think of that song. I also love Brian Eno, of course. I've always loved Eno's stuff, even when he got into the weird ambient stuff later. But his Roxy Music music. Oh, my God. That stuff is so classic. And I listen to uh, Brian Ferry a lot. Uh, I love what they oh, yeah, did Brian back Perry. in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, they, oh, you're talking about some great, great musicians, man. Uh, hey, we just got a couple of minutes here because we're going to end a little bit earlier um, for commentary purposes. But uh, talk talk to me about some of those guitars behind you, Mark. Uh, there, There's one, um, I think, to your right um, that is um, behind there. Um, is, is there a story that goes with all these guitars? I can imagine. Must be. Well, yeah, and then to this, to this, to this side, that's a violin actually right here. Yeah, so I see that. I actually play a little bit of violin, so I really love this thing. Um, it's really great for, you know, I'd rather just kind of play the part myself than use samples or something. And then if you're talking about the electric guitar. Yeah, yeah. This one. Oh, yes. that. Is orange. Is, or, is that orange or red? It's actually red. As you can see, I like red. So in the studio, there's a lot of red. I have a red acoustic guitar <laughs> over by the David Bowie poster. As long as you don't vote uh, red, it's fine with me. I like the color red. I like, well, I wear black a lot, but I like this color of red in my in my studio. So um, it, it's an active color. So uh, the red nice. guitar just goes with the studio. That's why I bought it. No, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. It's actually a PV. And PV doesn't make that many electric guitars. They're better known for their amplifiers, right? But they make these amazing guitars every once in a while, and they're they're a little expensive. But this one is su like a super deluxe because it has not only does it have humbuckers on it, which are the double uh, coil pickups like this one has, which is great for he heavy metal and really loud music, distorted music. But that one also has two single coil pickups, which is a totally uh, different style, like this one. This is a Les Paul. So oh, yes. these are single classics. This is actually a Les Paul Jr. 
because originally they had single co coil pickups. So this gets a really nice bright sound. And that thing, the PV has both. So you don't have hmm. to switch between guitars. So you, it's you just cannot, got, like, you cannot oh, lose any of these guitars, man. These are these are just jewels. I mean, fantastic. Les Paul yeah, and the one you had earlier. Hey, we got to run, my man. But uh, thank you so much. So now that we have you, hopefully we will continue to uh, have good success with the feed uh, there in Seattle. And, uh, hey, have yourself a great weekend, man. It's so great to see you, um, you know, for the you know, first time in a long time. So. All the best, my you man. Too, you take Jeff. care of yourself. Check out Democracy Watch News. That's one of the, the organizations that I work with. And then you can go to YouTube and check out my videos. And please subscribe and you know share the videos because uh, this is independent media that you're seeing here, folks. You're not going to see this everywhere else. You know, So value That's it sure. and cherish it. This guy is really great, it's... by the way, Jeff Santos. He's a cool guy, and you should watch his show every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, I, guests are for too. I love Harvey. Not that I have and a lot of money, but whatever. Boyd is I one of my heroes. So. Good yeah. people. Herb, Herb is fantastic. Hey, have yourself a great Absolutely. weekend, man. Uh, thank you so you much. Um, uh, folks, it just, um, you know, a couple of things here. I, I must tell you, um, we have um, been doing, you know, these shows and we're going to continue to keep doing these shows. Um, and, you know, what you have seen over the last few days um, when we combine the likes of Nichols and uh, Harvey K, and when we do it with uh, Brian Garvey, and we're going to try to do a lot more people in quote unquote in the boxes. If you're watching us now on video, and you know this is something that I think is really important uh, to bring as many voices as we can, uh, you know, at the same time, and and to you know be able, and we're going to try to do more texting and more commentary at the bottom of the page as well for people to make some comments and so forth. But we have an opportunity here. I mean, this what has happened this week with Trump and what has happened in, in, on last week, our Saturday, Sunday, with the whole situation with Biden scoring, there's an opportunity here. And we're going to move toward August to make this happen. So hopefully we can do just that.